counsel to the president, is able to respond to some of the breaking news in the president's impromptu uh, presser, at least that we didn't know about before. Kellyanne, do you think it was a wise move to do what the president did and break format, leave the Afghanistan meeting, meet the press for an hour, and go back? It's excellent. It's in keeping with his uh, transparency and his accountability as president. This president makes himself accessible to the press on a regular basis, and including on these foreign trips and these multilateral summits. Uh, I also believe that him taking questions where there's no notes, no net, people see him in full. And what he, the case that he is pressing at NATO is the case that he was pressing before NATO, which is everybody should pay their fair share. If you think about the one major theme, apart from patriotism and, and America first, that really undergirds this president's policies, it's fairness. It undergirds his policies on educational choice, on tax cuts, giving everybody a tax reduction, for example, it on his immigration policy. And now, of course, uh, obviously trade, reciprocal and fair trade agreements. And now, of course, with respect to NATO dues. Let's review the facts. The, our country spends about 3.5 of its GDP on, on defense, uh, excuse me, on NATO. And we're one of 29 countries in NATO, but effectively we approximate about 67% of the defense spending. All he's asking other countries to do is pony up and, sh and not just show up, but also pony up. This is a reasonable request. This president can focus on both national security and economic security. Other countries will have to decide if they're their membership in NATO or what their domestic priorities are, are they more economic security or national security? But this president has made very clear and very successfully clear that he can focus on both. He's called for peace and prosperity around the globe. He's uh, obviously he's thinking big, as he always does, talking about cures for diseases, peace everywhere. But peace to him means people paying their fair share in paying for for the common defense and right. also sitting down with Kim, sitting down with Putin, pulling out of the Iran nuclear deal, pulling right. out of the Paris Accords. Other presidents tried and vowed and almost insisted for 40 years, folks, for 40 right. years, other presidents, right, left, and center, have been saying, pay your fair share, get Absolutely. up to 2%. This president is actually delivering on it. There you go. And, and that's the headline. He came out and he said every, all the nations agreed to, make, uh, to pay more quickly to get to the 2% in a relatively short number of years, he said. But uh, there's breaking news, Kellyanne. According to the Associated Press, French President Macron denies the Trump claim that NATO powers agreed to increase defense spending beyond previous targets. So does that mean uh, it's not more than 2 percent or does that mean what? Well, the president made clear that everybody has to go back and some have to talk to their own state, mm -hmm. their, excuse me, their own legislatures and whatever their system of government is. Uh, France pays about, according to my statistics here, about 1.81 percent. So they're close to 2 percent. That approximates about 53 billion uh, toward NATO. Uh, but other countries are, are way down the list. So this president is making clear that he wants people to pay their fair share. And by the way, everybody th from the president of Romania to the secretary of NATO earlier this week praised Donald Trump, our president, for, pu for pressing that case and saying that he thinks there's a direct nexus between the president politely but mm -hmm. firmly pressing this case and people being willing uh, to pony up more money. Uh, look, this is, this, if you go back to the founding of NATO, the president wants it to return to its moorings, to its founding, to what, what the purpose of NATO originally was. And, and he made very clear that he recognizes that other countries uh, don't have the same, don't have the same money, frankly, don't have the same funds. Um, some don't have weaponry. But when he, I, I think the president would agree with many people who say that we don't necessarily set what the appropriate mounts are, our enemies do. Mm -hmm. What is necessary for the defense? What is necessary for the protection okay. of peace-loving people everywhere? But I think it's the president's pressure and, and, and his polite pressure, right. if you will, that Telly has led us to this point. Telly Ann, the president is going to sit down with Vladimir Putin on Monday. It'll be Sunday here on the East Coast at that point, and we're going to be covering it and going overseas um, to, to go cover that. He said this about, about that sit down, that meeting and his relationship with Putin. Listen to this. You know, somebody was saying, is he an enemy? No, he's not my enemy. Is he a friend? No, I don't know him well enough. But the couple of times that I've gotten to meet him, we got along very well. You saw that. Um, I hope we get along well. I think we get along well. Uh, but ultimately, he's a competitor. He's representing Russia. I'm representing the United States. 
So, in a sense, we're competitors. Not a question of friend or enemy. He's not my enemy. And hopefully someday, maybe he'll be a friend. So, Kellyanne, I want you to react to that and what we can expect. And also, Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer said he's more loyal to President Putin than to our NATO allies. Your reaction? That's a, that's a disgraceful comment by the minority leaders in the House and the Senate. Uh, because they're always making everything so personal and so political. They're doing it to Judge Kavanaugh. They're doing it to President Trump. President Trump has said, he said just to the foreign press within the last hour, Ainsley, that the couple times I've met with Vladimir Putin, you all have been there. Contrast that to President Obama, who was caught on a hot mic saying to a Russian official, hey, after the next election's over, I'll have a little bit more flexibility. Which kind of president would you prefer? One that's caught on a hot mic promising flexibility in secret? furtively, or President Trump, who's very transparent about it. But what President Trump said in the last hour is, is the most important part, which is, look, we're not, he's a competitor. Vladimir Putin is the president of Russia. President Trump represents the United States. But if we can find a commonality of purpose on the big issues of the day, then of course he's going to sit down. When this president says we want peace around the globe, He's, he's saying that if that includes Russia to push back on things like ISIS, which of course is a shadow of itself under President Trump's leadership, uh, then we'll, we'll do it. But every time this president has had to push back on Russia, he has. The Russian sanctions, the Russian expulsions from this country, obviously pushing back not once but twice on Assad when he's gassing his own people in Syria, having been propped up by uh, Russia in, in so doing. Right. Uh, we don't recognize the annexing of Crimea. We've made that very clear. But why wouldn't the Democrats, why wouldn't peace-loving people all across this country, regardless of their political affiliation, welcome an opportunity to find out if there are ways in the pursuit of that peace, if okay. not prosperity, that mm -hmm. we can work together? All right. That's coming up on uh, Sunday into Monday. Uh, and but may I just say one quickly, quick thing? Quickly. The Democrats have been talking about Russian collusion. I mean, they're, they're, they're harumphing and hoping that this collusion delusion is somehow real. When they think about Russia, they think about 2016 elections. When the president thinks about Russia, he thinks about 2018. There in the go. future. All right, indeed. Kellyanne, thank you very much thank for you, joining us. Thank you. All the best. All right. You too. Thanks.